Okay, I don't know what happened. Somehow or another we got disconnected. It said because of a, a um, poor connection. I don't know, I'm showing a, a full connection to our Wi-Fi, but anyway, sometimes these things happen with these, uh, with the internet. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to what I was talking on, possibly some of you may have to get back on. I'll, I'll give it a few minutes for people to re, um, to finish. Um, I, I, since we got cut off, I'll just have to, uh, uh, I'll have to try to, uh, I mean, I'll just continue, but I won't be able to put up or post our, you know, our date and the name of our church and website and, and all of that. So if you've got my uh, phone number, you can always text me uh, any questions that you might have on there. I apologize for the inter interruption, but I, I don't know what caused it. Anyway, I'm talking about the cross, this, this message on the cross. Um, you know, I've just, I'm just been stating that uh, there's a message going around the uh, religious world of Christianity of just looking to the cross. That that's, that's the power of God. The Bible does tell us that unto salvation. Well, it's true if you understand the work of the cross, what was actually accomplished on the cross. So it's not just stating that I just looked to the cross and what Christ did. If you don't understand what he did, then it doesn't bring power unto salvation to you. Just stating words is, I had a, uh, we had a brother in the body of Christ by the name of Brother um, Billy Watson. And he used this uh, concerning water baptism and the, uh, the name, you know, uh, that was to be said in, over water baptism. And he said, you can stand out in the middle of the street and jump up and down and holler, I'm an elephant, I'm an elephant, I'm an elephant. And it won't make you an elephant. You can say it all you want to, and you can say, you can repeat anything you've heard or read in the Bible, but if you if it really hasn't transpired in your life, and that's what I was gonna say a minute ago, is that um, uh, uh, that this requires an absolute work of God in your in everyone's life. This born again experience. Um, let me read, I was going to read in Galatians, the sixth chapter, uh, and I was explaining that the backdrop or the platform here, or context of what Paul was saying, was that the, the, the church at Galatia was being uh, heavily pressured to be naturally circumcised and put on some of the rituals of the law. And... Uh, so he was trying to correct them on that, and and uh, and and he was just saying in thirteenth verse, Galatians six, it says, "For neither they themselves, who are circumcised, keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh, in your flesh. But God forbid that I I should glory, save in the uh, save." In, in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Uh, for as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble you, he tells them, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, uh, with your spirit, amen. So he's telling them that, uh, that 
he gloried in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me um, and I unto the world. For he said, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, but a new creature. So uh, the work that Christ did was to perform a new covenant that would uh, make it possible that you and I could be born again as a new creature, that there be a new birth, and that cannot be done by just uh, just the word of God or, or even just faith and believing, but there has to there has to transpire an operation of the spirit of God that causes a new birth. And so God has to deal with each one of us individually. Or if you remember what Jesus told his disciples, that he said, I am in God and I'm in my Father and my Father's in me. Now, he t talks to them about sending the Comforter. This is in the 14th chapter of St. John. He tells them, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you comforters. But he said, I will send you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Uh, he starts that off in the uh, 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 14th chapter. Let's turn back to St. John 14 right quick. Uh, I've taught this in the, in the church here more than once concerning the mansions uh, in the very first verse. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say something on that, but that's not the crux of what I'm getting to about the cross, but it does, it does uh, apply. He says in, in St. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let me say something about these mansions. In my Father's house are many mansions. That word mansions is translated in other places, abode. It's an abode. In my father's house are many abodes. This whole chapter is dealing with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus was teaching those disciples. And that's the abode he's talking about. In my father's house, which is the body of Jesus Christ, the church, um, are many abodes. Once you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then that the baptism of the Holy Ghost abides in you and you abide in Christ through a new birth and a new creature. And I know there may be have there may be have been some other teaching on that, but I think the context of this chapter will definitely prove it out. Uh, if you uh, look at the, the uh, I want to go ahead and, and read a little bit here. Uh, okay, in the uh, 16th verse, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, before the disciples were born of the Holy Ghost, born of God's spirit, before they were made a new creature, the Holy Ghost uh, dwelled with them. It was with them. Many of the prophets of the Old Testament, the Spirit of God certainly operated in the Old Testament, 
but no one was born of that spirit. Uh, it dwelled with them, but Jesus is telling his disciples here, he shall be with you, he shall be in you. Uh, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. Let a little while the world seeth me no more, but you shall see me because I live. You shall live also. See, it's the birth. It's the life. You need to get that. Uh, no one wa was alive unto God after the fall of Adam. It took a new birth. And Jesus accomplished that on the cross. Jesus died on the cross I um, think I'm back on again. I'm going to move right quick to another area in my house. I don't know if it'll help anything or not, but I'm I'm afraid for some reason we're not getting good connection. I'm going to get my wife to come in my office and get uh, get a, uh, if I can get her to turn the TV off and things, and I'll get her, turn everything off, please, with connection in my office. So we'll see if we can get more, um, a better connection in here. I apologize if this don't work. Connect. All right. Well, it looks like maybe we're back. I'll see if we can, if we, I've, what I've done is turned my Wi-Fi off and possibly um, just with the cellular connection, it may be better, maybe something right now, uh, problem with the Wi-Fi. Anyway, uh, I hope you can hold on to my, uh, my thought that uh, I was in the 14th chapter of St. John uh, and uh, let me read on just a little bit here. Uh, where I said he shall be in you in, in the 17th verse. And and I'll not leave you comfortless. So I'll come to you in a little while. And the world seeth me no more, but you'll see me because I live, you shall live also. I was just stating that no one is um, uh, alive. No one was alive unto God. We were alive unto Adam. We were born of Adam, a natural life, but we were not born of God's character after Adam's fall. We all are of Adam, a fallen nature. And it takes that rebirth, that new man or new creature that I read to you in sixth chapter of Galatians. It's going to take that new birth and that becoming a new creature for us to uh, begin to develop God's character. When God, when we're born again, we're, we're, uh, our, that that new character is a it's a holy righteous spiritual character, but it's got to be developed. You know, I've often said many times our mind is a is the vehicle of our behavior. In other words, you you grew up as a little child in the Adamic nature, and your mind lines up with that nature, the way the world is, and things of this world. When you're born again, you've got the nature of God in a, you've got two natures. You've got Adam's nature. You've got, now you've got God's nature. But now your mind is going to have to be renewed uh, in, in, in the ways of uh, Christ, God's character. You have to develop, your mind's going to have to begin to line up with this new birth and this new nature. That's why it's going to take the renewing of our minds. Let me go on here just a little bit in the 14th chapter. I want to get back to mansions because I know that may be a little bit of a twist for some people. Um, in verse 20 here, it says, At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. See, prior in the... In the uh, 16th verse, he's showing that the that the Spirit of God was with them, or it it dwelled with them, but he, it shall be. When this happens, it's going to be in you, not just dwelling with you. The Spirit of God's not going to just be there as a witness, but you're going to be born of that Spirit, of God's Spirit. 
verse 21 says, he that hath, <coughs> excuse me, he that hath my uh, commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he'll keep my words and my father will love him. I want you to get this verse. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That word abode is the Greek word mone, which is the exact same word, Greek word, that was translated to mansions in the beginning of this chapter. In my father's house are many mansions. It could have just as easily been translated, in my father's house are many abodes. You're an abode for the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God to be born again as a new creature. I'm an abode. We're all, there's many abodes of those who have been born again in God's house. This is God's family. We're his children. We are, uh, he dwells in us now since the work that Christ did on the cross. Jesus came, he became a human. He took not on himself the nature of angels, read the second chapter of Hebrews, but he took upon himself the seed of Abraham um, that he might be like his brother. He wanted to become like one of us so he could be a faithful high priest and a great mediator. How could he know what condition we were in if he didn't experience it? Jesus came here and became uh, a human. However, he was born of God when he got here. He was, he was born of God, and he was also born of Mary. And, of course, after our rebirth, we became like him, except Jesus was like this. He was like Adam in the beginning. God watched over him and helped him uh, live the life of righteousness from a from his youth, and he, even though he was exposed to sin and he was tempted, the scripture tells us in both the second and fourth chapter of Hebrews, but he lived, he did not ever give in to sin like Adam did. And so he was a perfect sacrifice that was offered up to God. It was on the cross, but get it, saints, Jesus's death on the cross was just the finality of God sending him here and causing him to mortify the deeds of the flesh or the humanity that he was born of and develop fully in the righteousness of the creature that he was in God's character, the nature that he had of God. He did that. He was the first fruits of those that did that. He did that so that we could accomplish that. So that could transpire in us. So this Holy Ghost birth that he's talking about here um, uh, in the 14th chapter of St. John, it's talking about us being born as a new creature. Uh, let's read just a little bit further. Uh, and we will come unto him, that is, when if a man loves me, he keeps my word. We're in verse 23. My father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. We're going to dwell in character, in a new birth. It's being born of God. That's the new creature. Uh, he, that, uh, he that loveth me not, in verse 24, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the fathers which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, and he'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whosoever I have said, or whatsoever I have said unto you. He's telling that to his disciples. So this new creature, again, that's in... Uh, if you want to go back to Galatians 6 again, 
uh, and, and read that, it may, may ring a little bit different bell uh, in, your, in your thinking. The 14th verse says, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So this work on the cross was to bring about the possibility that you and I could become a new creature under the work of grace that Jesus did on the cross. He was the, uh, I was going to say earlier, that was the finished work, him on the cross. Remember he said, he told his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. See, Jesus' cross was the, the flesh, the carnality that was in fallen man that he had to deal with, he had to overcome that. He had to develop the righteousness that was in the character of God that he was that he came here with, but he had to fight the the, the fallen nature of man. He he experienced that. And of course you and I have experienced that, but we have to go through a process ourselves. Uh, let's let's turn to Romans, the sixth chapter. Uh, <clears throat> here he's in the, we'll start with uh, the third verse. It says in Romans 6, 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus, let's just talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, were baptized into his death. That's the work that he finished on the cross. He, he died daily. Paul said that, I died daily. Jesus died daily. He died out. You know, in other words, you and I are having to go through this life. Here's the wonderful thing. That when God, when, when there is a means that God is able to touch your life and the sweet Holy Ghost arrest you. I mean, how many of you can remember the day that the Spirit of God came on you and God, uh, God drew you to him? Jesus said that. No man can come unto me except my father draw him. Uh, you know, I, I remember uh, more than once as the Spirit of God dealt with me and caused me to that new creature. I remember when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I was just a little child, but I remember it. I remember every time the Holy Ghost comes on me in such a powerful way it helps me to know that God, the Spirit of God, individually has dealt with me as a person. And, and he has given me life because of the work Jesus did on the cross and became the ultimate sacrifice. That's what the whole law was a picture of. It was a picture of God sending Christ to accomplish this work. It took 4,000 years after the fall of Adam for it to happen. But God was faithful. He was faithful under the covenant that he made with Abraham. And we, uh, we are certainly children of Abraham by faith. You know, he had faith in God, even though he never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in his lifetime without it took a resurrection for Adam to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and be born again. It wasn't available under the law. But uh, that was the better resurrection that Paul talked about in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. So uh, anyway, here in the sixth chapter, let me, let me read on a little bit further. 
uh, verse 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That is, when you're born again of the Spirit of God, there is a death takes place to the, to the flesh. You're willing to die to the flesh and be born of the Spirit of God unto a new creature. And uh, w there's, there's a death that takes place that it, you're, you die out. It, you don't, the, the death doesn't fully take place there, but there is a death uh, to the will of giving up the fleshly life. That's what the picture of water baptism is. Water baptism is a picture that uh, of repentance that I'm I am making a proclamation that I'm giving up that old life. I'm dying out. That's what going down in water is a picture of. When you go down in water, in water baptism, you're showing that I'm dying out to the old life of living without God and I've made a decision to follow God and serve him through faith. And therefore, when I come up out of the water, I'm coming up with a, with a proclamation that I'm going to serve God uh, in this, uh, this obedience under water baptism. Here in the sixth chapter of Romans, it's talking about which water baptism is a picture of, spirit, of Holy Ghost baptism. And that's what the picture is here in the sixth chapter of Romans, that when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're even going further in dying out to this Adamic nature and being born of the nature of Christ, that is of God, of his spirit. We, we have life. Verse four says that we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, so when we're born again of the Spirit of God, we're, we're to walk serving God and we're having to live in that death to the flesh, but life unto God like Paul mentioned in, in Galatians, he said that uh, the, how did he say that? Uh, concerning the cross, he was crucified. The world was crucified to him. That's what the death that this is talking about. You die out to the things of the world, but you uh, are made alive unto Christ. And that's what the Holy Ghost, that's what the Spirit of God actually does. Water baptism is a proclamation that you're going to serve God. But until you receive the Holy Ghost, it actually doesn't transpire or happen until you're born again of God. And that can only take place by work of, of, the, of God. God has to do that. Uh, you can't receive the Holy Ghost just because you, you may have a desire for it without the proper meaning or, or until you get to a place to where uh, God is satisfied that through faith you're desiring to be born of his, his nature. And so, you know, if you remember, where was it? Where Philip went down into Samaria and, and he finally sent for James and John, I mean, Peter and John, went there and, and remember the man Simeon when he saw that the people received the Holy Ghost by the laying on of the apostles hands he said give me this power and Peter told him he said let your he, he offered him money he said let your money perish with you you're you know you're in a gall of bitterness to to think that God's going to give you a power like this so that you can have it with the wrong motive or so that you can get personal gain out of it it takes a dying out of the things of the flesh and the world that was exactly what he was uh, of uh, to get to this place where you're, you're willing 
to die out. You're willing to give up all to, to have God in your life. And it takes God to work this kind of uh, salvation and this new birth or new creature in every one of us. Let me go on just a little bit further. Um, let me read that fourth verse again. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. See, Jesus' is, is resurrection it's true that he resurrected out of the grave, but uh, he resurrected unto life. It, you know, he, he was continually, the, the resurrecting life of God was continually working into him and lifting him up out of the nature of, of the human life. And, and you and I, as we die out to this world, and we're made alive unto God, we're, we're living a resurrection life. In fact, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's the beginning of the, of the first resurrection. That's the beginning of you uh, resurrecting unto life. However, that life has to continue to work in you until it's fully developed in you, just like it did Christ. Christ was alive but he had to continue living in that uh, character of, of God that was of the nature that was in him until it fully was developed in him uh, as a human. I've often said that Jesus was a greater being when he went back to heaven than he was when he came from heaven to the earth. Because when he was in heaven, he was an archangel, and he was the son of God, but he was he was made of celestial uh, material, and he wasn't he didn't he never experienced being a human. He never had to overcome the the uh, temptation of sin. He never had that in heaven. But when he came here and took on the seed of Abraham and was tempted and through the power of God working in him, he developed to a point that he overcame the fallen condition that was in man and was made perfect and finished his death on the cross. And you and I, go through the same process. But until that process takes place, his work on the cross causes us to be have imputed righteousness. In other words, God call, counts us righteous. Just like he did to Abraham in the beginning, he counts us righteous because of our faith. We are just justified by faith. In other words, I, I understand what Christ did I, I'm born again of the, his spirit. I'm living, I'm living a life of continually dying out to the world, things of this world, and being developed in the character and principles of righteousness through Christ, that serving him and him developing uh, the righteousness and true holiness. Paul talked to the Ephesians about righteousness and true holiness in this new creature being developed. See, there, there is a, a holiness or a, a righteousness being preached. It's not true. True holiness is when you are truly sanctified and you're truly living this dedicated life and God's continuing to work in you and you are, you are faithfully serving him and letting this this new creature develop in you until there finally is no more vehicle for 
the Adamic nature. Once your mind is fully renewed and you think, I told someone today, I said, your natural life, and I've told this to every church that I've pastored so far, when we all start out as a Christian, we have a natural life and we have a spiritual life. We go to church and we get, you know, once we're born again, we get recharged and we try to live that, you know, that new creature. We try to uh, give over to the new creature and let it have dominion. But then, to, you know, our then we slip back into our natural life. You know, we go, we may, we may hold on. Uh, there, you know, in other words, your life is like a cistern. Or it's like Noah's Ark. You have to get um, um, pitched within and without. You can't let this wonderful Holy Ghost uh, leak out. You can't let the world come in. But that's hard to accomplish. It takes time for that to happen. And so uh, we, we'll, we fight. We have a wrestling with two natures, the, with a natural life that we're living and then a spiritual life. But the closer we come to God, the more we're developed in that, in that Holy Ghost nature, the more our natural life becomes a part of our spiritual life. Finally, they have to be in unison. Finally, me, I'm to be a righteous human. God, I'm his workmanship. He's to develop his righteousness and true holiness in me and it's a process that has to take place it took it was a process that took place in Christ he wasn't he wasn't a finished product until when he hung on the cross he said it is finished look at the apostle paul the apostle paul when he wrote the letter to timothy he said timothy he said i have fought a good fight and i have finished my course I can't say that yet tonight I know I haven't finished my course I'm still fighting a good fight I'm still continuing on in faith serving God and I intend to keep fighting a good fight until I finish my course and you and I that there you know what did Jesus? What did Paul say? He said, "He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course." He said, "There is therefore a crown of righteousness. That that ruling and reigning element in the bride of Christ." He said, "It's laid up for me, and not for me only, but for them also who love His appearing." See, that's not just talking about Jesus coming. Jesus could come tonight. He's not going to because it's not time. There's too much prophecy that's unfulfilled yet. But if Jesus did come, it would not make you righteous just because he personally appeared to you. But if he appears in your character, if he's developed in you, that's what Paul was talking about. If he's fully developed in you, then there's a crown of righteousness laid up for you. You'll receive that crown of righteousness just like the Apostle Paul did. What did, what did uh, Peter say? He said that uh, I must shortly put off this tabernacle which the Lord has shown me. See, God, God showed him that he had finished his course and here pretty soon God was going to have him put on that new body. He was going to get a body like unto Jesus' glorious body. Like Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians, that if this house be dissolved, we, we have a, a new house. If this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a new house. And that's talking about, he was talking about our body, that we'd get a new body. We're going to finally, if, if, if you finish your course in God, you're going to get a, a celestial body. You're going to get a body to operate, rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years in the bride. That's what God's making up right now. 
anyway, I'm just uh, going over. Let me let me uh, read a little bit more here. Verse five says, for if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. You see, this work on the cross is deeper than just what Jesus went and done that paid a price for everybody else because they couldn't make it. He went and did it to make it possible that you could make it. And, and you'll go through the same, Romans 8 chapter. Uh, we, we, we'll look at it in a minute. We're to mortify the deeds of the flesh through the spirit. Um, I don't know. It, try to turn your sound up, Brother Green. Uh, Brother Green's lost his sound. We're having trouble with the internet, so I don't know what people are hearing on the other side. Somebody text me uh, or comment on there. Let me know if there's any sound. Can you hear me? Uh, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I hope somebody will comment and say, I can't hear you on my end. I'm hoping that we ain't lost sound to everybody. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, Sister Estrada said, I can hear you, Sister. Um, Cherry Boyd says she can hear me. Okay, Sister. Okay, people can, they have sound. So I hope for Brother Green, you're getting, you got it back. All right. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that he shall also, we shall also live with him. In other words, the world, that's what he's talking about. The world, let's go back to that verse. I think you'd have to hold on to that. Um, let's see. Oh, it's in, it's in Galatians 6. Let me, let me see if I can get that verse right quick for you. Yes, it's in Galatians 6, 14. It says, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. See, that, that's the death. When we were born of God, we were willing to give God all our life. We were willing to, to die out to the things of this world. That's a death that took place and be, become a new creature and be made alive unto God. That's a, that started a new process of a new creature to develop in him. It takes time. It takes time for you and I to develop the, the righteousness of God in our lives. Uh, let, me, let me turn to the eighth chapter and I'll try to wind this up. Um, Verse 12, Romans 8 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you'll die. See, <clears throat> that's a far cry from telling somebody that if they just believe in the work that Jesus did on the cross, you know, they just have to lean on that, that he died for me and I'm doing, I'm trying to serve him. You've got to have a greater understanding of what you're working on. You need to know where you're going. You, you, you have to die uh, out to this flesh. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. See, I'm, I've had the Holy Ghost for mm, go almost 60 years. And uh, 
uh, I've been born of God's Spirit, and that bears witness with me. The Spirit of God uh, works in my life, and that's a sign. It's a, it's it's <clears throat> it's a testimony and a witness to me that I am God's child. For you have not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not to, worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, the suffering you go through in dying out, this continual death of the things of this world and developing in this creature. Remember what Jesus told his disciples? He said, you're not of this world. <laughs> you're in this world, but you're not of it. <clears throat> and you're not either. If you've been born again, you're not of this world. You've died that the world has been uh, crucified to you and you to the world. And you've been made alive in the, the things of God. So, uh, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So, the our earnest expectation this new creature, we're waiting until it finally, we finish our course and it manifests the, uh, a complete, full-aged son of God. Uh, the man, Christ Jesus, has finally been developed in us. The work he did on the cross, uh, we had so many interruptions, I, I, I really didn't, I don't think I finished this this thought completely, but I hope I said some things that was um, uh, uh, that will help you some and they'll encourage you. Just remember, you're God's child. If you've been born again, and if you haven't been born again, it is available. He, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to life. It's available to you. Uh, and so you're, if you're God's child, just remember you were, when you were born again, this world was crucified to you and you to it, and you were made alive unto God. And God's purpose for you is to serve him and put off the fallen nature of man and the ways of the lustful flesh that's in this world by the Adamic nature. And that you're to continue to die out. Reckon yourselves, he said. In Romans, the sixth chapter, he says, reckon yourselves. Let me go back and read, read that. Uh, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ our Lord. You have to reckon yourself to be dead unto sin uh, while you're going through this process developing the righteousness and true holiness that's in Christ Jesus. God bless you all. Uh, remember to pray for Brother McNabb in, in Keswick, Canada. He's, uh, his health is failing. He really needs our prayers. Uh, little sister Bella Vili is um, needing our prayers. We have a sister in our church, Sister Amber, uh, Lacey, her nephew, has a, a heart trouble and they found a heart for him and he's having surgery uh, and he's gonna get a new heart. Pray that that surgery will go good. A good report, I talked to Brother John Kennedy today after being in the hospital and having a light stroke. He's improving, he's doing well, he feels good. Still a little unstable for his, on his feet. I'm sure he'd appreciate it if we keep praying for him. Uh, there's many others, Brother Shelby Weaver in our church needs our prayers. Um, 
I don't know, maybe some will post some of the needs here. Uh, Sister Amber Parker needs our prayers uh, in Belton. Brother Brother uh, Brad Parker, the pastor, his wife. Pray for Guatemala, Brother Fide uh, is on here Brother with us. Brother Dallas Stone. Wants us to remember, Brother Dallas Stone in the McAllister Assembly has cancer and is really suffering. Uh, pray for Sister Oates in Godfrey. Brother Oates who passed away last month and or maybe early this month, and I know she would appreciate just holding her up in prayer. Brother Johnny Budd, his wife, Sister Eudora, passed away three months ago, and he's adjusting to uh, that loss. So remember him in your prayers. Chuck Millsap's mother. Brother Chuck. Millsap, Chuck Millsap, uh, and his mother in Wichita, Kansas. His, his Also his wife, Sister Bernice, remember her in prayer. Unspoken request for Sister Lois Estrada. Uh, my brother has stomach for cancer. All the children with cancer as well. Remember them, she asked. Uh, Marcelo Rendon. Thank you all the way from San Antonio, it says. All right. God bless your hearts. Uh, remember these prayer requests and our petitions as we close here this evening. Let's just pray together. Dear God, Lord, hear our petitions here tonight. Lord, you know the needs, especially those that are serious uh, health situations. God, we just ask you to work your will with each one of them. We're asking you to be mindful and consider your children. Oh God, your healing power, our trust and our faith is in you. In Christ's name, Jesus, remember our uh, unspoken needs uh, and requests tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Have a good evening. Once again, I apologize to you for the interruption that we had on the internet. I really don't know what caused it, but anyway, we made it through. God bless you. Keep looking up. Remember, lift up your heads, O ye gates and the King of glory will come in. Have a good night. God bless.